Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com with Drew Brown of GouletPens.com. Everybody's been asking for more Drew and you know what? Here he is. So we wanted to talk to you today about some of the top pens that we had come out in 2017. That was the year we just finished. Yes. And we are wearing these glorious holiday sweaters. You're welcome. Because we're wrapping up the year and uh, Drew's inspired. Bask in it. Yes. So uh, we did a video last year, Top Pens of 2016, and we wanted to basically kind of do a repeat performance, except for pens that came out this year. And uh, there was kind of a theme this year, Drew, wasn't there? Yeah, like I would say limited editions and overall hard to get your hands on type pens. Yes, bright popping colors, things also like that. that. So we're going to have a disproportionate number of pens on our list that you can't get anymore. So Sorry. I apologize in advance, but what's hot is hot. That's what was hot in 2017. So. Starting at the top of the list, we have the Lamy Safari in Petrol. Now, they come out with a special edition color every year, and this one was pretty hot. Yeah, last year there was the dark lilac, and they took the finish, uh, the textured look of the Charcoal Safari, which has always been like their big heavy hitter of the Safari line. Yeah. And, uh, you know, rolled with that for another year and did sure. a, uh, what would you call it? Like a, it's a matte finish. But what color is the Petrol, though? Is that like. It's a, like a deep teal. Deep teal. I would teal. call it like a teal. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it looks like, you know, it's a good petrol. It's kind of like a, the universal, what's considered the petrol color at this point. Like there's some, so. there's some inks that are around yeah. that uh, that type of color. That, yeah. You know, Black, popular too. Blacked out trim, blacked out nib. It's coming off the success of the dark lilac yeah. last year, which was really tough to beat. I think the dark lilac was such a pent up like demand for a purple pen. So that Huge. one was a little hotter, but this yeah. one still really knocked it out of the park. Great job, Lamy. Absolutely. Next one on the list is the Edison Nouveau Premier in Delphinium specifically, but really all the yeah, premieres. Yeah, the Edison's the always, the premieres that we have seasonally are always a hit, but the Delphinium, you know, the, uh, w w is that the fabled unicorn bar color? No, that was last year, Water Lily. That was it. That this was on last year's list. But it, was still, but it still had that nice, like, uh, light, uh, bl light blue color that people just really seem to eat up. And this one was no exception. We couldn't keep these things in stock enough. Yeah. It's my personal, literally, this is my personal favorite premiere that we've come out with yet. Yeah, you've got a little bit of a backstory about it, don't you? Not really. What? Except that I love the pen. <laughs> no, no, what? There's really no backstory. What so, about the flowers? Okay. okay. Uh, oh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me, Drew. Oh, gosh. Well, okay, so Delphinium is actually don't let Rachel the hear color this. of, she'll see it in the video, <laughs> is the color of the flowers that Rachel chose for her bouquet at our wedding. There we go. And uh, I totally knew that. I just wanted to make You're welcome. look yeah. good. Um, but no, so it was it was somewhat significant there. Um, but also, that this color of pen is one of the probably three or four pens that Rachel actually turned a pen in the original Goulet Pen Company. She actually turned a purple and blue and white oh, pen. Oh, yes. So she made a pen out of a similar material. Right. Which is like one of the five pens that she ever made. So very, like, like lots of hidden kind of significance to this one, but it was also phenomenal. But that color. didn't make it sell the way it did. It sold the way it did because it's just a good looking pen. Yeah. And Edison, you know, had a tough time keeping some pens in stock this year. They've been growing like crazy. They moved their shop. They had some machines that were down. So we had some shortages, which led to some of the hotness of the pen. It was you couldn't really get it anywhere. But um, they're working on that, and we're hoping to, to see more good things from them in 2018. Absolutely. All right, next up we're going to talk about the Stipula Etruria Rainbow Prisma 88. Right? Is there enough words in that, no. in that pen name? No, no. It was, a, it was a big pen. It was a rainbow pen, a legit rainbow yeah, like pen. Like a rainbow demonstrator pen, which is Yeah, cool it's like between the rare. colors, it was like translucent. Yeah, it's really And cool. it was a piston filler with a titanium nib, yeah. which was crazy. I remember taking the nib off of one of those things, and it was so thin. It didn't feel like it was strong enough to write with. I'd never really felt a titanium nib before. We yeah. had the Keras Customs ones, but I yeah, hadn't really, similar, you know, similar, yeah. I hadn't fiddled around with them as much when we got that pen. Yeah. But I just couldn't get over how thin it was. But it's a, it's a tough freaking solid, metal. Yeah, solid so. writer. It's a great pen, too. And, and I'd always wanted to carry an Etruria pen from Stipula, but they don't make these pens regularly. It's not like an ongoing thing. They're kind of only like special edition things. And they discontinued their Etruria Alter Ego a couple of years ago, which I had, we had special ordered one for a customer one time and I wrote with it. I actually did a video on it huh. back when I Haven't had the time yet. to do videos on pens we special ordered. Um, now we don't have time to special order. But, you know, I had done a video on that and loved the pen, but it was out, out of my own price range personally at the time. So I'd always loved it, never had it. But so this was cool, like kind of a like 
Yeah, it was like a milestone for us to be able to carry that pen again. And um, they only made 88 of them. We got a decent number of them, and they, they blew. Yeah. I was I w- amazed. No, I was super surprised by that because we hadn't we don't carry a ton of stipula. Right. And the fact that this thing was as popular as it was just goes to show you that, you know, A, limited editions are just people love them. Hot colors. And rainbow pens, believe Dude, it or not. Cool stuff. There's a little bit for everybody regarding, you know, what color you like. Mm-hmm. Twisby. There are a lot. What are you doing? There are there are I'm a lot it, as you said it. That's weird. Um, there are a lot. There were a lot of special edition, hard to get your hands on Twisbees this year. There really were, and I'm going to list them all. Please do. I right forgot. Now. I Here we go. Blocked it out. Starting out in March, we had the mini all blue. June 580 all turquoise. August eco turquoise. September classic in white and in turquoise. October mini all in gold. November eco t in blue. December 580 all rose, and there was a VAC 700R in there, too, oh. in there somewhere while that was going on. That's a lot of pens. Twisby had a lot And happening. every single one of those was a crazy mad dash of a release. It really was. There's something about Twisbys that make people go bonkers. And they're mm-hmm. great pens. I mean, I get it. I really do. Clear. But you can see the ink in them. Bright colors. Limited stock. And they're quality. Get it. They're a good qual- price, it's a, it's a quality writing instrument. Yes, and at a great affordable price. Exactly. In my opinion, if it costs about the same as a video game, people can really easily justify buying it. That's what I always equate there it to. Go. I'm like, so, well, would I buy this anyway if it was a new PS4 game? Yeah, sure. So which of these ones was your like hottest one? Oh, man. Um, I'm a big fan of the Eco. I think that the, yeah? the, the Eco has just changed the game. It really has. When they came out with the Eco, Eco at the price that they came out with it mm. at... Mm. It just it's a game changer pen. So which one? Um Eco T or the turquoise Eco? I kinda like the Eco T. Really? I do. The blue. It, the blue That's and I, I I prefer the triangular yeah. aspect of it rather than the Fair whatever enough. hexagonal, Fair whatever they have going on there. Yeah. I like that one. I think the Eco and Turquoise to me kinda took it. I well, agree to disagree. Here. Fine. I agree with your disagree agreeing to dis do I disagree? That means I'm right. Agreeing to dis- whatever it is. Sweet pens. Yes. The next one here is the Pilot Vanishing Point Crimson Sunrise. And this pen was like here and gone. I mean, it was like six hours we were gone with this pen. Kind of forgot about it. Yeah. And it, Not really. And, but it was fast. So they do these every year. It's a limited edition pen. They make the number of pens for whatever year it is. So they made 2017 of them. Um, and it kind of gets split up and gone throughout the world. So it just tends to sell out really quickly wherever it is. Um, it's a really hot pen. It was an ombre finish reminiscent of the Twilight from a couple of Which years ago. Which was blue and purple. Absolutely. And, and this one was like an orange to orange red. Orange to red, yeah. yeah. And it just looked really phenomenal. It just came, went, boom, gone. Medium nib only, just really gone. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see because Pilot is celebrating their 100th anniversary next year. And I haven't heard anything specific about what might happen in the 100th anniversary related to the vanishing point. But I'm just, I'm optimistic that they're going to do something really interesting. Well, they're not going to do nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Next, we have to talk about the Visconti Luna, which is an opera master that the design was conceived right here, and it was a just a fortuitous, incredibly fortunate circumstance. When you were there, right in the meeting, when, Ra- when Rachel saw the uh, the Daedalus, yes, in that blue. And what happened is, like, you know, sometimes we'll be working with distributors or manufacturers. They'll visit or we'll be seeing them, and they'll be like, hey, we've got this idea, or maybe we've got this possibility, or let's think about what we could maybe do together. And that's how this came up. The distributor, you know, Coles of London, they said, hey, we've got this pen. Maybe we could do something. This blue material, it seems kind of cool. And we were like, boom. And yeah. Rachel was like, opera master, boom, let's do this, make this happen. And there we go. It's like this blue, gorgeous <sighs> material, translucent. So, so, so very sparkles us. in it. Like, yeah. It just screams goulet. Absolutely. Right was, up our alley. It was cool because, you know, we've only had Visconti for a couple of years. We pursued them for like four years before we were able to carry the brand. So, right off the bat, it was like an accomplishment for us, right? But then, right off the bat, like two months after we started carrying the brand, if you remember, Crimson Tide. We got the Crimson Tide. And so that was that was the first, you know, kind of uh, uh, exclusive that we Specifically got. Specifically the Crimson Tide and the Rose Gold and the Ruthenium. Exactly. The, the silver. The gunmetal or whatever we call it. Yeah. yeah, the other, the silver one had been out previously. Exactly. But, but so, they, well, it wasn't, it was our, that was our like first 20, exclusive. That was like 20 of each pen. So right. So we didn't have them for that long and they were gone and that was it. And, and it's been a couple of years since we've had right. uh, an opera master like that. So we, the opportunity came up and the timing was right and we were like, yeah. And we were even talking about how many of them we should make. 
And Visconti, they like to end their numbers in eight because eight's kind of a good luck, you know, number in Italian. So um, they like to end it on eight. And we were debating between like, do we make 88 pens or 188 or 118 or something like that? And just, I don't know, we felt 188. It's a lot of pens. And part of that was we wanted to have the pen a little bit longer. We have so many other good ones here that like come and go like in the same day. We yeah, wanted, you can we still get this one it. Yeah, we, as of right now anyway. Right. We wanted it to be available for kind of a while because it's such a gorgeous pen. And once the materials retired in that pen, they're not going to make any more of those. They might use it in something else in the future. And another cool thing about this that. is that unlike the Crimson Tide, which had been out in a slightly different finish, mm. this one is 100%... It's new. Us. It's new. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. You really can't get this pen anywhere else. Not yeah. in this model finish. So, so it's really pen. exciting. Double reservoir power filler. It's got the large palladium nib on it. Beautiful material, uh, and it's phenomenal. And they're all limited edition that are numbered. Nice too. box. Comes with an ink. Mm -hmm. Visconti blue, right? Yep. Yep. It's just gorgeous. Beautiful. Go Love check it. it out. Love it. Next, let's talk about the Lamy Ion. We should talk about the Lamy Ion. We're going to talk about Because the we've been talking about the Lamy Ion for the entire year. <laughs> That's true. This pen has been, <laughs> we have been asked about this pen throughout 2017. Really and it finally on. came toward the tail end of it. Very tail end. So we're, we're taking a little bit of a risk by putting this one on the hottest pens list because it hasn't really gotten out there yet. But uh, I think it's worthy of it because it's not every day that Lamy comes out with a whole new pen model. Lamy's an iconic brand. They spent three years developing this pen with Jasper Morrison, a designer from the UK, and uh, they're super proud of it. Like when I went over to Germany to visit them, they literally was like, you would think they had like graduated their child from college or something. It's like that's how much they put themselves into these pens. There's a big difference in when Lamy comes out with a new pen than when Visconti comes out with a new pen. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, Visconti, they love their limited editions. They yeah. love their, you know, doing something slightly different and changing yeah. it up, providing just a, exclusives just to a different few, retailers. A few of them put them right. out constantly. Lamy doesn't do that. Lamy is like, okay, we are going to be making this thing for another century. Yeah. Or, you know, at least 25 years. Yeah, they they don't take this lightly. They, their research process is years long. And they intend for this thing to be around for a long, long time. Yeah, and, and I think they've developed that with this pen. It's a very kind of a timeless design that yeah. they came up with. I think it's going to take a little while to get out there in the pen community and, and really fully appreciate this pen. But I'm kind of proactively putting it out there. I think it's going to pick up speed in 2018, but I'm, I'm calling it a hot pen. Now we're going to talk about the Pelican M805 in Ocean Swirl. Brian is marinating I'm just like on this pen. soaking in this pen well pelicans come out with so many phenomenal pens and they come out with a lot of good special editions like that's what we tend to really why are you so into do this well one? well I, mean, I like it i just want to know i want to know what i don't know the like lean they, back in the chair thing they've come out about. with so many white and brown pens that's recently just, and sometimes which, white and brown right which is like i, I can appreciate that there's a, certainly a following they've been popular not really my thing but Literally from the first moment I saw the picture of this ocean swirl, I was like, oh dang. He did say that. That is the pen that I've been waiting for Pelican to come out with for a while. And like, I'm a total sucker for any of the Pelican swirly pens. Or just about any blue pens. Well, that's true. At all. And this one's a loosely blue. It's not like the Goulet blue, but it's still no. that teal kind of color. And that honestly, definitely I think hits some, me in the right sometimes place. a lighter blue, I think is uh, you're able to get more texture out of it and depth. When sure. you have a swirly pattern like that, sure. when it's yes. a little on the lighter side, a little more on the tealy side, I yeah. think that it, you get a little bit more of that shine, glow, shimmer, depth. It yeah. lends itself to a little bit more. And they've had other colors like the blue o' blue, the green o' green, the vibrant blue, other things like that that I've really loved. But this one, I've never seen this color of like a teal color in uh, a pelican pen any kind of recently you know and just i, I don't know it looks freaking phenomenal and you're not alone it uh, it was it resounded with a lot of folks and we yeah. there was a lot of buzz around it and it did really well it's got that chatoyance on it just mm. plus the m805 mm. i love that size of pen it's perfect the weight everything that is my favorite pelican pen and uh they nailed it there you have it brian Drew. Let's talk about the Stipula Toco Ferro. Toco Ferro. Toco Ferro. Yes. This pen was so controversial with our team. And I know you and I were both like pro Toco Ferro. We were. We got a sample of this pen in. And we have a whole team that kind of like weighs in. But it's Rachel, not like we thought it was going to be like, oh yeah, this is going to be amazing. We no. were like, let's try. It was super polarizing though. Yeah. Some people were like, that is the ugliest pen I've ever seen. That orange is disgusting. I hate it. <laughs> and 
and, and you and I were like, "What are you talking about? This pen it's is okay. freaking awesome." Yeah, I, bet. I don't know if I, I don't know if I said it was awesome, but I'm like, "It's I fine." Like, yeah. I saw the appeal at least. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, fair it enough. was definitely a chance. I'm like, I, I can get how it would be polarizing. But I definitely saw that. I, I liked it. It's an iron pen, which is just cool. Having a new material pen yeah. like that. And it's got that, it's a piston filler, which stipulous piston fillers work in reverse, which I always find just really yeah. interesting because it's different. And nice ink capacity. It's a really appealing pen. Really heavy pen, too. It's iron. Which anybody who's into heavy pens, this is a really good one because it's heavy, but it's not huge. Like, it's, you know, it's not a big, like the Visconti Opera Master is like a big heavy pen. Yeah. This is a smaller heavy pen um, that is just, and it writes really well, too. So, uh, yeah, this was really interesting. I think, I think we were not anticipating that it was going to be as hot as But it metal was. pens were huge this year as well. Yeah, I guess so. Like, that. that's a thing. People have been really into titanium and brass and, True. you know, copper. Interesting metals, So, yeah. finished off the year with an iron. There you go. It was hot. It was. Last but not least, the Conklin Duragraph Merlot. This was something. This was actually an accident. <laughs> this pen was not even supposed to exist. They were trying to make either the purple one or the red one. It was the purple one. They were trying to no, make no, the sorry, the red one. The red one. All right. So, so they were trying to make the red one, and it came out a little more purple than they purple. wanted. Yeah, it was too yeah. close to the purple. So and they, they knew they were going to do a purple one. They did do a purple one. Right, but they knew that. And they are like, yes. okay, well, this one can't be too purple too because close. we're doing a purple one later. Mm -hmm. So, But the cool thing about it is they, they, they paid it forward. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is a and then sometimes this happens. You know, manufacturers they come out with something and it doesn't come out quite right. Um, in this situation, they had a bunch of these pens and they're like, it's too close to the purple. We wanted a purple. They wanted a purple knights and a red knights. The red is going to be like a much more vibrant, bright red, like this kind of. Color. And this was a ripple knights. Yeah, I was like, and they didn't they didn't want to name it that. Ripple. No, it doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> um, so literally, they were like, we were gonna call it a red knights, but you guys call it whatever you want. If you want to take them all, we'll give you like a good blowout price. Right, which was super cool of them to do. Yeah. Because they could have just said, okay, yeah, and here's a third pen and we're going to charge full price for it. Right. So I thought but that was no, really they, awesome they of them. They passed it on and they said, you guys can charge a lower price. And, and we kind of negotiated a little bit. Which we, we did. <laughs> and uh, we we thought like, we'll have these pens probably three or four months, you know, and it'll be around. And uh, it lasted, what, hours? Yeah. Like they freaking flu and I then we got a couple subsequent it. smaller shipments and those lasted even less well not so originally we were supposed to get fine medium and stub and right. nibs the fine nibs were back ordered from from conklin so all they had were medium and stub so that's what we released they all sold and we had like a second batch that was supposed to have fine nibs but that was going to be several weeks after the holiday season we were like can we just throw stubs on them? And oh. and we got those in, and those were gone. So yeah. it was like they never were even available with a yeah. fine nib. It was all just me. Like, if stubs. the vanishing point was blocked out of my memory, this one is so fresh that I'm like, just yeah, it's very recent too. Yeah, man. But and then they have, now they have the purple knights. The red knights is going to be coming later in 2018. But Durgraf has a hot model, and the color was nice, and now it's gone. At the time, there was also a free ink deal going on with it as well. True. That so didn't those hurt. things just. Booked it out of here. Yeah, so if you got one of those, you got a good deal. Yeah, you did. And, uh, yeah, hot pen. Before we close out here, I want to give an honorable mention to some of the hot inks that were out this year. There you go. There was, n there was no ink, like one ink that was as hot as really any of these pens. It, you know, it's like no. in the past we've had crazy hot inks. You know, They, left, they left their mark some, on 2017, though. Yeah, but there's some honorable mentions. So, like, Lamy Petrol has to be talked about. We were very limited on that one, but it was yeah. gone. It like almost broke our website. It's rare that you can talk those. about a limited release Lamy pen of uh, Safari or All Star without talking about the corresponding ink. Right, and we had more of these than we had, uh, uh, you know, initially expected. But even still, it just wasn't enough, and they were right. came and gone, and then that was it. So hot color. Um, we also had Dimeline Earl Grey which was like a Reddit community kind yeah. of color that came about. And it's been so popular, I, I can't even understand. It's exactly. got a little bit of a, is that a little bit of a green hue to it? Just a tad. No, yeah. it's not anything too crazy. I mean, it's got good shading, you know, but I think just the Reddit community, they voted on it. So, you know, it's like their ink. And that's just Diamond, it's Diamond, popular. Diamond makes some good grays, too. They do. They're solid. They really do. So that was interesting. And then really Robert Oster just has a whole brand. You know, we carry that. We started oh, yeah. carrying it early in the year. And just how many awesome colors have come out from them. It's really been a stunner. So yeah, he's got a good hype train behind him, too. For People sure. get excited about new inks. For sure. And then Reformulated Monteverde. They have really come on strong with their ink game this year. That one's the dark horse. Yeah, for Monteverde sure. Monteverde inks are probably the dark horse of 2017, for as sure. far as the ink world goes. Yeah, like Fire Opal and some of these other ones have just been so hot. Yeah. But really, the whole brand as a whole has kind of turned around and been been a real player this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the last one I have to mention is the uh, new Jerobon. 
1798 Amethyst de L'Oreal. There you go. Which is basically... I'm glad he said that one. It's basically like a dark lilac with shimmer in it, so... Which is nice. Which I dig, and that's been pretty popular. Yeah. Too. Yeah, so that is kind of the hot stuff that's happened in 2017, uh, aside from our sweaters, of course, which I would say have been... That's the highlight, highlight really. Of the, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. You can check out some of what we talked about if it's still around on GouletPens.com, but be sure to check out in 2018. I'm sure there will be more hot things to come. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Instagram handle, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, our blog. There's all kinds of great ways to follow what we have going on and see the hot things that are going to be coming this coming year. Thank you, Drew, for joining me on this video. Always a pleasure. You're a gentleman and ah, a scholar. Golly. And thanks so much for watching. Right on. No guarantees. My shoe's untied. That's why I'm doing this. You do. That's good. It's going to bother somebody's me. Somebody's going to point that out on YouTube. It's oh, I do have a giant thing in my teeth. Howdy doody. Is that flawless yellow? Here, let me try that again. <laughs> no, it's See, good. Like, that was good. Oh! I don't like that. And Brian is Ocean Swirl. Ocean swirl. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, let me eye on. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm just gonna like marinate on it. <clears throat> Hi, welcome to the Brian Goulet Nap Hour. I knew having you in here would make the video longer.